Next to our house was the um, local railway club. It was a very popular working men's club. And um, my mum was always puzzled about the, the lady who ran it because by day she looked like a man, but at night she'd required a voluptuous bust, lovely long hair, painted nails, and uh, my mum could never work this one out, so I wasn't allowed to talk to her. And she also kept monkeys, and I was absolutely fascinated by these monkeys. So I used to go in the neighbour's yard, climb up and look skylight and watch them scampering about. And I often wondered if it was my imagination, because I imagined that they'd got um, vines to eat oranges and bananas off. And, and I often wondered, did the monkeys really exist? And when I was doing this piece of writing, I mentioned it to my mum. I did watch monkeys, didn't I? And you hated it, didn't you? And she says, yeah, because they used to pick their own backsides and pick each other's backsides, and I didn't want you looking at it. And I just never remember anything like that. I just remember the wonderful monkeys scampering up and down. And I don't remember the ladies changing appearance either, but my mum did. Who's the same lady that had the monkeys that did the monkeys that she had I always remember more than two. And my mum said, oh, there were definitely more than two, but I can't remember, she said, how many. Maybe they were part of like a music or I wonder. I, I do wonder because uh, there was lots of entertainment then. Because the, there's a pub on uh, Nietzsche Lane called, well, it's Monkey Works now. That used to be called the monkey. I think the real name is the Victoria. Um, because a monkey used to sit on the bar. I wrote a poem about that one, actually. Um, so, yeah, there was that. And there was uh, Lizzie Woodhead's shop. She was in the front room of our, of our house. But it was all boarded off. And I wasn't allowed in there. Um, it was full of second-hand clothes. It was fabulous. And I used to sneak in if I could. And there'd be furs and silks and satins and lots of paisley stuff that really fascinated me. And it was so sweet to go in because I knew I shouldn't. But apparently it was full of books and really unhealthy and smelly and grotty. But I think kids are drawn to things like that anyway. But I always went in if I could. But I'd be in trouble if I was found out. But I've never seen the front of my house. I can't remember the front of my house and Dad never drew it and looking on the websites and, and things like that, there isn't a picture. There's the wheat sheath, there's the stag and the other shops but, but not our, our two houses stood alone and uh, I've never seen the front of it and I can't remember it either. You were saying about the lady with the shop, she used to, she used to not... She used, to, she used to come back after, after lunch and... Yeah, and bring clients, I think. And my mum used to read stories to me to drown out the noise. But I, I never heard anything like that. And I think that's another reason I, I couldn't go in the shop. That's very interesting. So, have you got oh, some other great. little gems like that? Um, I've got the day my mum was black lead in the stove. And I was be reading or drawing or playing. My mum was black lead in the stove, and it, obviously it was an open fire. And she 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 done all the stove and laid the fire. And she was finishing with the mirror, and her apron caught fire. And I was terrified because her apron was just going up in flames. Anyway, she just pulled it off, opened the window because we were on the first floor. We lived up the flight of stairs and she flung it out of the window and I watched it go down and burn itself out in the yard and oh, I was scared stiff and she just put her hands under the cold water and carried on, never said a word. I remember once we found a rat in the toilet. My mum was going to stroke it, she thought it was a kitten. <sighs> So a police, oh God, she screamed and ran down that yard. I've never seen her move so fast. Anyway, it must have been unwell. It came out into the yard and just laid in a huddle. 
and um, because that was at Whitsuntide, that's how I can remember it. And a policeman came, and a policeman got the rat catcher, and he came and he uh, got the rat in a bag and he lit the area where the rat had been because he thought it was diseased. And he said they're coming from the houses that they're knocking down up on one side. My great granddad was. Uh, he had a, a fruit and veg cart and he used to go around selling fruit and vegetables and he was nicknamed the crafty captain because he used to drink and gamble in the pubs and pretend he couldn't see and he'd cheat and uh, he, father's father? he was my father's granddad he's my great granddad and uh, he, he's from that class of Sheffield. Yep, yeah, he was. Uh, yeah, he was. Uh, he was. They lived on Fowler Street. My dad was born on Harvest Lane, so that's what took them back down there, really. Um, yes, there was a wall alongside the slope we had to walk down to get to our yard and a brick had been carefully removed to create a spy hole. My great-grandfather, the crafty captain, told us that our house, 151 Harvest Lane, had been inhabited by a street bookmaker and that a spy, known as a tout, would stand on the slope looking through the spy hole for the police to appear on Bingley Street as the police station was just around the corner. If the police were spotted, the alarm would be raised and the men would run from our house with illegal betting slips and dispose of them down the outside toilets. No slips, no proof of gambling. Business must have been good at 151, as there was also an illegal pitch and toss ring running the yard of the Wheat Sheaf Inn across the road. There was no social climbing and no, somebody's got this and we've got to have that. Everybody appeared the same. The women wore aprons and carpet slippers, and that's how they went to the shops. Even with rollers in the hair, that not unusual, that's how they looked. They were all Hilda Ogden's, you know. Yeah. And, um, but, but that was it. And, and nobody seemed to want to better anyone else. But everyone seemed so clean because it was really an important thing that your windowsills and your steps were done beautiful white, the cardinal and donkey stone that they used to use. And they even used to scrub the first three paving slabs outside the house. That was so clean. Fabulous. Not like that now. Mine's not anyway. <laughs> in, in summer, um, there was always lots of play. We had a, our our house had a, a building site on the corner because it was just rubble from the houses that had been knocked down. Oh, and we'd play on there and we'd find pieces of lovely glass and all the kids would be out, all of them, and uh, mums would stand talking and they'd get chairs out bring out the chairs and sit in the yard and talk and have cups of tea and it was just so good um, there seemed to be a sense of friendliness even though we didn't visit people like going into the houses people would come out and chat it, it'd be not unusual to see someone with a chair outside the front door chatting away to somebody really um, friendly about what I don't know but uh, it was it was good down there it felt safe.